Well, God bless you. Good afternoon. My name is Hector, a.k.a. Papito. Good afternoon. My name is Andre McKay. You can call me Dre. And um, we're going to talk about today a very sensitive subject that a lot of young people go through nowadays. And that is, is God really listening to my prayer? Because sometimes we feel like when we pray, our prayers look like they're bouncing off the ceiling. Our prayers seem like that it's not worthy enough for God to hear it. And today we're going to share uh, a man named Habakkuk. And Habakkuk is just like any of us. Uh, he was a, an ordinary man who was used by God. And was used by God in such a way that it was very unusual. It's not like you go to church and you know that that guy is used by God because he has a suit and he sounds real good. No, God used him to prophesy and to talk to his people, but in a form that is unorthodox. In other words, you're not going to find it in church a lot. The way that he was used is you're going to find it just like how young people go through when they're at home. God, am I really being heard? And through those questions, God talks to him. And so I'm going to read to you Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 2. And it says, O Lord, how long shall I cry and you will not hear? Brother. Talk to me um, about your experiences with feeling as though God is not listening to you. There's a time where I was in a low place. I felt like God didn't love me because of the mistakes that I made. And for about maybe five months, I continually felt as though God wasn't even near me to even hear my prayer. And in this time of wondering, God, what, what have I done wrong? Is something wrong with me, God? Why, why don't I hear you anymore? I read your Bible, but it doesn't change. So I came to a place where I had to understand the love of God. To see that no matter what I've done, no matter what I could do, that his love for me and for you it doesn't change. So in that time of suffering, you could say, it took a long time for me to see that God loved me even after my mistakes, even after my sins, even after hurting his heart with the things that I chose to do. Hmm. And, um, you know, I felt like that too at times. Uh, and it relates, I can relate to in 1993, in Rwanda, Africa, when the, um, the Tutsis were being persecuted and the Hutu tribe were being persecuted, were being, there was a genocide. And a lot of people were looking behind the scenes and saying, man, this is horrible. And, you know, these, the people that were, that were being killed just because they had a different complexion, just because they had a different nose, they were looking for someone to respond to their call. And every time that they would he, that they would try to have a response, nobody was listening. And so, at times, the Lord answers through other vessels, but we don't want that. Just like Habakkuk, God answered him, and he tried to form the form the answer that God gave him to suit his needs. When God is actually not looking to give you what you want, because what you want will put you away from God will pull you from his throne. And so I learned that when I was praying to God, God told me through a dream that he doesn't want you to listen to your will, but his will. And it happened in the book of Genesis where Abraham was praying for his nephew to be saved because God was going to judge Sodom. And so have you ever felt, brother, that when God does answer, He's actually showing you a lesson? I've often felt that way. There's at times where I had to move past my own feelings and make the decision, is this really what you want, God? Because if this is what you want, you're going to have to help me. 
because I don't see how I can do it. And you're giving me this answer that I don't understand. But at the same time, you don't call me to understand. You call me to trust. So I just ask God to help me to trust him and be able to have the grace to obey his word. Amen. And um, we're going to close with uh, this passage where Habakkuk says, The just shall live by faith. Young people, God does hear your prayer. And when he says the just shall live by faith, it means you're going to be walking, not blindly, but you're going to be walking, trusting in God that he will answer every one of your needs. Not your wants, but every one of your needs. So until then, my fellow brothers and sisters, I am Hector. This is Andre. And we hope to talk about suffering in our next segment. May God continue to bless you. Good luck.